Uh, welcome everybody. This is Mr. Ndabezita once again. Uh, we, we are still going to deal with the delegate, but this time we are going to add some new things. We will be using the fat arrow and we will be using the substring method. So it is very important that we follow in this correctly and we try very much to understand exactly what is happening so i i'm just going to come in here and remember as we always do uh the very first thing that we we must do is to try and uh sort things up so what i'm going to do guys uh i'm going to open okay no i'm not going to open a new project we we're still going to work upon this one so the very first thing that i think i should do and that we we always do is to have a namespace so uh we have a namespace that it is it is x we have a class and uh what we are going to do inside of that class is to just declare a delegate so uh this delegate that we are going to declare we will call this delegate uh it will be inside of a class very important so it will be delegate double and i will call this the process delegate and it will accept two arguments so it has a return type very important this one doesn't return void just as the previous ones we have dealt with this process delegate uh, returns a double and accept two arguments all right and then what i'm going to do uh, i'm going to have two methods remember the methods are declared inside of a class uh, outside of the main so these methods will be static uh, they need to match the return type of the delegate which is also a double and the very first one i'm going to call this method multiply and the multiply will accept two arguments there they are autocomplete jesus this is very good so what i'm going to do here i'm going to use the fat arrow this is what we call uh the fat arrow so in multiplication what i want to do i just want to take parameter one and multiply that with parameter two very important and then we we are done so i'm going to copy this and paste i'm just going to have two methods but this one i will call this divide and it will just simply divide uh two numbers okay that is fine and uh, nothing new uh, we understand exactly what is happening there we we dealt with more complicated things than these all right when we are here inside of the main the very first thing that we are going to do is to create an object of the process delegate now how do we call the process delegate we call that via the name of the delegate which is the uh, process which is the process delegate and i'm going to create an object of the delegate so let me just say process so what is this this is an object of the delegate okay that's fine something like a variable because i did not reserve memory for this and so on so you can just look at this as a variable of the object which is a a process delegate okay that is fine and then secondly what i'm going to do let me just have a write statement and in this write statement i'm just going to say enter two numbers separated by a comma now let me explain what is going to happen here we prompt for the user to enter two numbers that are separated by a comma and right we have a problem here because when you enter two numbers that are separated by a comma how am i going to deal with this how am i going to deal with that so this is uh, the entire aim of this tutorial if somebody enters two numbers that are separated by a comma at the same time how do you deal with it so let me just demonstrate this via coding 
so I'll just say enter two numbers uh, separated separated by a comma so the user will enter those two numbers now I'm going to store these numbers inside of a string and I'll just call this an input and it will be a read line so what do I mean by that I'm saying I'm treating these two numbers that are separated by a comma as a string and now I have a problem with this because I'm storing this inside of a string and when I try to run this let me show you something suppose that I try to run this and see exactly the kind of problem uh, that we are going to do suppose I have two numbers 3.4 comma 7.8 and I press enter and nothing is wrong with this I just have these two numbers as as a string so it will be treating these two numbers as a string but I have a problem with these these numbers are not strings they are not strings let me show you something suppose I run this and I enter the number uh, 4 and there's there's nothing wrong with this so it is just treating whatever that you are entering in it is treating that as a string right but I did not output this please be very careful when you run this when you enter a number four nothing is happening right let me show you something if i comment this and i run my code so we are having an interactive program here enter two numbers separated by a comma you see and then it just uh, goes uh, it just jumps out why because after this right line there's nothing else to be done but when you have a variable that stores whatever that you 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 the user is inputting let me show you the user input in number three enter and now you have stored this three inside of a string called an input you see right if you were to output that string Let's just have a right line. Let me just have a right line. And I just want to input this string. Let's run things and see now what is going to happen here. Right, I enter uh, these numbers 3.3, 4.4. And it just outputs those numbers as a string 3.3 and 4.4 nothing mysterious about this very important it will treat those it will treat the entire line as a string whatever that you input there it will read that and store that as a string it will interpret that as a string nothing new with this but now the user enters a number and these numbers are not strings i know that they are not strings they are numbers right now we come here what is it that we want to achieve now now we have stored this string inside of an input just as we saw and we output that and then we saw the values now the first number is a number I want it to be recognized as a number and uh, the second number is a number I want it to be recognized as a number but they are separated by a string so let me declare a variable of type int and I'm going to declare this as a comma post right and I'm going to say this is equals to the input which is a string dot and when you press the dot there is a method there that we call the index of so this method index of 
it says it reports the zero based index of the first occurrence of the specified unicode character in this string very important so now the index of what now i want the index i want the position the position of this word now this uh string that i have which is a comma right i want to find the position where is it located because the user enters two numbers that are separated by a comma so when you say that because it's an int so very important it returns an int because it returns the position the position where this string is so hence i'm using a variable here of type int because it will search and find the position where the string is located now let me show you something let's run this let us try to run this and let me show you something we have 3.3 comma 4.4 now it will locate let me show you when i say input dot index of now the input is a string now in this string i am looking for the index of what the index of this comma here this is very important and it will return an int because it will locate the position of that string because you have position zero position one and position two so 3.3 .3 is at position zero comma is at position one and 4.4 .4 is at position two very very important so it will locate what now the position the input dot index of that comma and then it will store that it will store that int which in this case it will be one so it will store that inside of a comma pause right uh, let me just close that now let's run and see what we have inside of this comma pause let me just have a right line and in this right line i want to output the comma pause i want to show you something here let's run this right okay let me just say 3.3 comma 4.4 and you see now it outputs a three now what does the three mean right so the comma pause is at position three so let's try to interpret that we have a string okay let me do this we have a string here it is and we have 3.3 .3, comma 4.4 and the position of the comma is at position 3 very important so this is uh 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 so 3 look how it reads that 0 1 two three four five six do you see so the comma is at position three so this is zero one two three very very important that we understand that now let's continue with our code i now know the position of the comma now once i know where the comma is the position of that comma i now want to take the first number in this string i want to interpret the first value which is 3.3 .3. i want to identify that as a number not a string now let me declare a variable of type double and i'm going to call this parameter one and this parameter one i'm going to say dot to double 
Remember here, I'm not prompting. Already the user has entered two numbers that are separated by a comma. So I'm not prompting here. I have to extract that number. I have to extract the first number inside of that string and also be able to ex extract the second number without extracting the comma very very important and i want to invoke the methods that will be able to multiply those numbers so that is why i said this is a little bit more sophisticated thing to do so we need to pay uh, to pay special attention on this right i declare a variable of type double because i know the user will enter two uh, 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 numbers because i said enter two numbers separated by a com so even if the user enters an integer it will be interpreted as a double that's fine we will not get an error on that right i am converting the first number which is interpreted as a string and then i'm converting that number as a double so inside of my brackets i need to say input i'm going to the input which is that string dot substring now the substring method it's very very important now the substring let me just do this and i'm going to get rid of this and when we hover over here it retrieves a substring it retrieves very important it will go inside of your string and it will retrieve it retrieves a substring from this instance which is what in this case the input is our instance right the substring starts at a specified character position and continues to the end of the string so i need to specify where it should start and where it should end very important now it retrieves a substring from this instance so it will in other words it will it will it will retrieve uh, that 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 uh, the position of whatever that you want to specify there it retrieves a substring from this instance the substring starts at a specified character position and continues to the end so it accepts two things now it returns a string that is equivalent very important it will return a string it returns a string that is equivalent to the substring that begins at a start index in this instance very important so it accepts two things where should it start the starting and the ending it should start at zero at the first letter of the string very important it should start at zero and then i'm sending in the comma pause right this is very very important now what do we mean by that what do we mean by that i know what the value of the comma pause is that is three so it starts at position zero and then it does what now it will end in listen let's let's come here it retrieves a substring from this instance the substring starts at a specified character position and has a specified length i know that it has a length of three the comma pause has a length of three very important very very important i know that the uh, comma pause has a length of three we saw that so it will start at position zero and has a specified length which is three that is the length of the string okay that is fine what does it return it returns a string that is equivalent to the substring of the length and then what is the length of this we saw that the length is seven okay but we we never checked that but we know that is the length we know that is the length in fact we can just go and verify that let me come here 
and I can come here and have a right line and I can just say uh, input dot length and then what is that now right what is that now it will return the length of the the input string let's just run this i'm going to say 3.3 comma 4.4 and there it is it is seven because it is one two three four five six seven all right so we know that we know the length i want to take you through a step by step here so that we understand what is happening so uh input dot substring very important it will start at zero and it will uh it will uh, and and has a specified length and we know that the length is seven that is fine it will return a string that is equivalent to the substring of length so it will return a string that is what now what that is an equivalence of the substring of length which is seven so it will return a seven but as a string very important not as as a num right so this is what i have i'm saying double and then i'm having this uh parameter one and i'm saying equals uh, to double then i'm saying input dot substring it accepts two things start at zero and end at seven all right that is fine and then i have uh, another parameter which is a uh, param one and this is equals to i'm also converting that to a double and then i will also say input i will also have a substring but now i will have a comma pause very good i know that uh plus one so when i say plus one i know that the comma pause has a uh, a number of three so when i say plus one that's where the comma is it returns an int this one and the number the comma is at position three very good when the comma is at position three when i say plus one what am i doing i am i am heading to position four comma pause plus one it's position four very important very very important this is the first thing that i'm doing this is uh, where it should start remember this is the start and this is the end so it should start at comma pause which is three and i know at three what is it that i have i have a comma plus one then it should start at number four where i have a second number very important so i'm having comma pause plus one and then the second is the input and i'm going to use the dot length now i know this returns what now it returns an integer and i know the length is seven so seven i am minusing the comma pause when i minus the comma pause what is now seven minus three it's four seven minus three it's four and then i minus a one why this is the second one so here i'm having the input dot length i know the length is seven seven minus comma pause which is three seven minus three it's four four minus one it's a three so it should do what now it should end it should read from uh position three going to the right because here it should start at comma pause comma pause remember where it should start comma pause it's three plus one it should start at number four and if i have 3.3 comma 4.4 if i have this and what does this mean 
I know I have a comma at position 3, and then when I say plus 1, it will be at position 4. Right, that's where it should start, meaning it should start at the beginning of the second number. Right. And then here, where should it end? Input dot length, that is 7. 7 minus 3, comma pause, it's 4. 4 minus 1, it's a 3. So it should end at 3. Where is that? Remember, it will be there until there because it should end at 1, 2, 3. Therefore, it will end there. This is just simply how you have to understand this. I have tried my best to explain it in a way that I think you will understand. Right. Okay, that is fine. Let me just change here and make this parameter 2. So it will be able to extract uh, that, 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 that string here and it will convert that string to a double. It will be able to extract that string here. It will convert that to a double and store that. So I am having double numbers here. I have converted those numbers via the substring which comes as the input. This is exactly what is happening there. Now, once that has been done, I want us to have a write statement. Right, I want us to have a write statement. And in this write statement, we will say, enter m for multiplication or D for division. And let me just do this. And the user is going to enter that. So let me just override this because what is going to be entered here is a string. So I don't have to declare another variable. Let me just uh, override that one. So input equals read line. Okay, everything seems to be working fine. Everything seems to be working fine. Now, let us continue with our code. Now, now I'm going to run a check. If input is equals to an M, there's something that I want to do. I want to invoke the object now. Now, the process is equals to new. I'm reserving memory for this object instance. Uh, it's equals to new process delegate. And then what is it that I need to pass in there? I need to pass in a method. So this will be uh, multiply. Right. And then once that has been done, I don't have a problem. I can have an else. If you did not press an M, therefore you have pressed a D. Therefore the process here will be equals to new process delegate and that will be division divide. Very good. Nothing mysterious about this. And then once that is done, let me just have a right line and just say, uh, I'm going to use interpolation here. I'm just going to say a result and uh, I'm going to just say uh, I'm going to just send inside the uh, the process and then inside of this process let me just send in the arguments so I'll have parameter 1 and parameter 2 and you ask me why are you doing this remember remember the delegate accepts two arguments very important so when you invoke the object here, you need to pass in those two arguments. And then that will be that. 
and then I will just have a right line. Okay, let me just have a read line. And then that will be that. Right, I just hope that I have explained everything the way in which it needs to be explained. Let us now test the code. Let me just test the code. Enter two numbers separated by a comma. 3.3, 4.4. Enter M for multiplication or D for division. And I'm going to enter an M. Result is 14.52. All right. Let me rerun this. Uh... 2.2 comma 5.5 and this time i'm going to press a d the result is 0 0.4 so this is something very important that i thought guys uh, i should share with you using the fat arrow as you have saw and just trying to use some advanced methods as to how we can extract numbers from a string and be able to do whatever that needs to be done so thank you very much guys you can do this with three numbers four numbers five numbers you can be able to do this and you can separate them by a comma you can uh, create an array and th there are so many things there are so many things you can do with this so this is all what i wanted to share with you please do like share and subscribe if you find this very useful uh, this is papa fanzo uh, the great mathematician i will see you in the next tutorial Uh, guys before we terminate our tutorial i thought just i should show you something we can we can achieve many things here even if we don't do this here even if you don't come here and uh, you don't do this you don't say process equals new process delegate even if you don't reserve memory for the object you can just come here let me just do this you can just come here and you can just say process uh, is equals to multiply and it will still work just fine and the same can transpire in here you can just come here and just say process is equals to uh, divide and it will still just work fine we can just run this and things will just work fine so it, it, it it's it's really your choice on how you want to do this 3.3 4.4 and i will press an m and it will still work so the choice is just yours i just thought i should show you this all right so let's just stop this